Excuse me. I'm sorry, she's not available. Yeah, someone's available. She said she is. Well, she's not. When I was making Fast Times, and Sean Penn had just come off of this movie, Taps, and he was telling me there's this young guy there, and he's so good, and he was really worried about this young guy that was gonna be up and coming, because that guy was going to, like, rule. And um, it turned out he was talking about Tom Cruise. Tom came in, and he had us when he smiled. <laughs> and that smile was so winning, that it got him, you know, through the door, into the chair, and reading for Paul. I guess we sat there and talked for a little bit, and then Paul got the some scenes. I said, "Look, would you mind reading these scenes with me? You know, we'll kind of ad lib and play around." And and I said, "Well, sure, yeah, I'd love to." There was an innocence about Tom at that time, and there was a vulnerability to him, and yet I knew that he could still bring some heat to the love scenes without making it a joke, which would have been absolutely the wrong tone for the piece. Paul saw that, you know, there's something here that I'm really excited about and I can turn, I can turn Tom Cruise into Joel Goodson. I think the principal thing with Lana was you wanted a girl who a guy of 17 years of age could make a complete asshole of himself for. A girl that would be believable, that would be sexual, that would be comic. It was hard to find. John Avnett and Paul Brickman had looked at 300 uh, American actresses for this part, and we're all set to go to Paris, because Paul had said, you know what, maybe the actress is an American. Maybe, maybe she's European, because I'm not seeing this something, and then I walked in. We thought she was very attractive. She was very comfortable within herself, very comfortable with her body. She had a very interesting attitude that seemed to fit into Lana very nicely. And she just understood a lot of who that character was. Risky Business was going to succeed if there was genuine chemistry between Lana and Joel. And conversely, it would be probably very unsuccessful if there was no chemistry and the audience didn't believe them as a, as a couple. So we did what I think is now going to become a very famous screen test about 5 o'clock in the morning. When they called for the screen test, I remember I was so excited about this test the next day. And I don't think I slept at all. My house in Los Angeles became the set. Tom and Rebecca did the screen test on video in my living room. Tom and I, we were about the same age, but there was an authority that I felt within that character, and there was a nervousness about Tom that was just perfect. You could see it in the room. You could see it and feel it and get a real sense of it when they were together, and clearly they were that couple. Tom and Rebecca became Joel and Lana in Risky Business. All right, and action. Good morning. Hi. Beautiful place here. Thanks. Thank you. Is this all yours? Yes. Actually, my, my folks. Yeah, great. What is this, a half acre? Um, a little less, I think. Do you know what it's worth? Uh, no, but a lot probably. Uh huh. Real estate's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'll need three hundred dollars, Joel. <coughs> You're kidding. No, I don't believe I am. Here, I mean in the house. You know. Well, how much do you have? Thank you. 
bucks. <sighs> Ciao. What are we gonna do about this fifty dollars? Huh? I've got a I've got a savings bond at the bank. So I'm just not that good at waiting for people. Hot shots. The uh, second scene in uh, Risky Business. John, you want a friend down a little bit? Yeah. I was going to tell you when I'm ready. You ready, Paul? You might tighten up a little bit, too. I was going to just start here and tighten up when she crosses a little bit. No, I'm tightening up now. Okay. Are you rolling? Yep. And action, please. Yes. Yes, I'm watering the plants, Mom. Okay, so you're having a good time, and how's Aunt Tootie? All right, look. Okay, all right. I love you. All right. Yeah. Okay, I'm hanging up on her. Goodbye. <laughs> My folks. Yeah, how are they? My folks? Yeah. They're fine. Yeah? How about Aunt Tootie? <laughs> oh, she's fine too. You know, her hips much better. Well, thank you very much for asking me. So you were telling me about Guido. Yeah, well, I quit Guido. How come? I 
on me, you know? Nobody owns me. Problem is, I owe them for some clothes and hospital bills and stuff. You mean you're in the hospital? Yeah, I have this big pain in here. I thought it was a heart condition. What was it? Heartburn. Ooh, ooh, nice service. What is this, reading Barton? <coughs> I'm sorry, but uh, I've got to go to school, so you're going to have to leave now. Kid. No, no, really, I have to go. You want to let me stay? I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. No, I'm sorry. Look, I would let you stay, but I'm afraid I'm afraid you're gonna take something big like a fireplace or a wall or something, right? Just a few hours, Joel. Is that too much to ask? A few hours, i got to make a few phone calls. I'm not going to take okay. anything. I've got to go. Okay, go. Wait right here. I just want my egg back, I want my house back, and I've got lots of work to do. Okay? Did you have a good time last night? Mm -hmm. when, we, when we got back here? You know exactly what I mean. Don't tell me I owe you another three hundred dollars. Did I say you owe me anything? No, 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 you didn't. I don't remember saying you owe me anything. You're really getting me upset. What about the end? You're the one who's going to college. Figure it out. Figure out where my stuff is. Guido's probably got me locked out of the apartment by now. Okay, uh, listen. Just please do me a favor. I'll do anything, Cookie. What? Don't take anything. Yes. No, no, I won't take anything. Okay. I mean it. If I get back here and anything's gone, Going straight to the police. Joe, go to school. Go learn something. <laughs>